Let's get into our next question here where they're asking about something a little questionable Zack Snyder may have just said. Jonathan, what do we got? All right. Well, Film Zone writes, worst thing a filmmaker can do is blame the audience if their film fails. Snyder just did that. Looks like Snyder says audiences just didn't understand his DC films. <laughs> is this a bad thing for a director to say, blaming the audience? Many did understand them and just didn't like them. All right, Film Zone, thanks a lot for sending that in. Now, look, I am a DCEU, including the Snyder films, apologist. I will argue to the day I die that Man of Steel, one of the greatest comic book movies ever made, I, that, that movie gives me so much joy. I will always have a debt of gratitude to Zack Snyder for making that film. I absolutely love it. I liked Batman versus Superman. I liked Justice League, both flavors of it. I liked the theatrical version. I liked the HBO version. I liked I liked uh, Suicide Squad, not the James Gunn. I mean, I love the James Gunn one, but, you know, the, the hot mess of a one. Oh, yeah. I, I like that. I was entertained by it. I know it was a hot mess. I don't care. It was fun. I like that movie too. The only DCU movie I didn't like was Birds of Prey, The Fabulous Emanci the, the Emancipation of the one, of One Harley Quinn. I didn't like that one. That's the only one I didn't like. So I am an apologist for those movies. But the reality is that a lot of the audience didn't like them. I acknowledge that. Even my beloved Man of Steel, a lot of people didn't like it, didn't make the box office numbers that they were hoping that they, it would make. Didn't have the critic reviews or the audience response that they were kind of hoping it would make. And that's fine, whatever. Well, apparently Zack Snyder, director of a couple of those films, you know, the uh, the HBO version of Justice League, Batman versus Superman, which I think is underrated, and Man of Steel, which is the most underrated movie. Uh, he made some comments that we've heard other directors say before, and it always rubs me there. I, I remember talking about this back in my movie blog days, that every once in a while, a director will come out and say something that kind of says, the, it's not me, it's you. And <laughs> and that's kind of what Zack Snyder just did now. Listen, this is, this is what he said. This comes to us from the folks at Screen Rant. He wrote the following. Snyder believes most of the negative reviews for Batman versus Superman were a result of audiences not understanding his multi-layered approach to storytelling. I feel like a lot of people went into the movies for going like, oh, it's the superhero romp, right? Let's have fun with it. And we gave them this sort of hardcore, deconstructionist, heavily layered, experiential, modern, mythological superhero movie. Wow. Keep patting yourself on the back there, dude. Say that five times fast. A uh, movie that needs, you know, really needs to pay attention to. That was not cool for them. They were like, what? No. It's, <laughs> again, this is Zack Snyder explaining his own movie. Hardcore deconstructivist, heavily layered, experiential, modern, mythological superhero movie. Basically, what he's kind of saying there is, I was just too deep for everybody. You just didn't get it. Uh, okay. I will say this. In today's modern time, and I say this in defense of Zack Snyder, because this happens a lot. In today's modern time, where filmmakers, actors, producers are constantly having cameras and microphones and cell phones and all this kind of stuff constantly pushed in their faces. I mean, quite often, you got to remember a lot of times when celebrities say stuff, it's not like it's stuff they sat down and planned out and wrote out and drafted. It's just like off the top of their head and they're just talking and winging. And I think just like most of us, I'm sure most of us in a lot of casual conversations when we're saying things off the top of our head, I'm sure at the end of the day, all of us look back on our days and go, oh, I wish I didn't say that. Yeah, like this whole time I've been here. <laughs> this whole time. <laughs> like every day I, I go home and that's what I think. Man, Man should I should have said that. open my mouth? I have a defense to this, but but go ahead. Go okay, on. so, and and I think what happens quite often is that maybe sometimes a celebrity says something that maybe didn't come out the way they, and, and I, it didn't come out the ideal way. And we kind of build our entire construct of what we think of that person based on something that they just kind of unplanned said off the cuff, right? So I think we need to cut Zack Snyder some slack here, okay? Now, that being said, I do agree it doesn't read well because it does kind of come across as saying, I'm not the problem to the audience. You're the problem. 
and I've always graded a lot when we've heard directors say that. And let's be let's be clear here. Zack Snyder's not the first guy to be guilty of this. I mean, many directors have done this before. I've talked about this a lot, again, in my 20-year career doing this. But it's always unfortunate because, number one, it's, it's a director brushing aside any criticism of their movie. But number two, this is where I think some directors have a disconnect. You're the storyteller if you're the director. And first of all, people understood Man of Steel and people understood Batman versus Superman and people understood Justice League. They did. They understood it. They just didn't like it. I did. But just because I did doesn't mean other people don't. And just because other people don't, it doesn't mean that there's something wrong with them for not liking it. They liked it. They didn't like it for a bunch of different reasons. But here's the main thing. As the director, you are the storyteller. If there is a big segment of your audience that didn't understand, which I don't think is the case here, but if there's a big segment of your audience that didn't understand your message and didn't understand your story, you know whose fault that is? That's yours. You're the storyteller. Part of being a storyteller is being able to craft your story in a way that will impact your audience. And if you're telling a story in such a way that your audience can't interpret what it is you're trying to say, that ain't the audience's fault. That's your fault. And so, number one, I don't think people misunderstood my beloved Man of Steel. I think they just, for whatever reason, they didn't like it for their own reasons. I don't think people didn't understand Batman versus Superman. I think they just didn't appreciate it the way I did for their own reasons. Film is subjective. But I do not think the fault lies with people watching it because... Zack Snyder's just too smart for everybody. I, I, and, and to be fair, again, I don't think that's what Zack Snyder was trying no, to say. No, so I think he needs to be cut some slack here on I, this. I, I will say, after watching Man of Steel in the theater, the, the people that um, I actually went to go watch, I think I mentioned this on Movie Club, they, they, they didn't expect that Superman, version of Superman. And I agree. They, and, they, and that's why they didn't like it as much as I I did. You know what I mean? They said, oh, I wanted more of the Clark Kent when he's a goofy Clark Kent. They, they wanted another, the Christopher Reeve Superman. Yeah. Superman doesn't kill or whatever, this and that. So I I, I, I get what he's saying in a way, but it he shouldn't have said it at all. No. And, and again, I think this is one of those things where like all of us, I think this is one of those things where at the end of the day, he probably looked back on his quote and said, I, I didn't mean it to sound like that. I, that, that, pro, that didn't come out right. I'm sure he probably thinks yeah. that too. Cause I, listen, I've met Zack Snyder. I, I've watched a lot of interviews with him as well. He does not strike me at all as the type of guy. I mean, say, think what you want about his movies. You can have whatever opinion you want about his movies. He has never struck me as the type of guy who's completely full of himself. Like I am the Martin Scorsese and Steven Spielberg and Francis Ford Coppola <laughs> combined into one magnificent God movie making being. That's not Zack Snyder. He doesn't believe that or think that way at all. Yeah. So again, I think it's just an unfortunate comment that came now, out the wrong now way. Now, if David Lynch said these words, I'd be like, yeah. If David Lynch said it, I would I would believe it. <laughs> I, I think it's just time to move forward. I'm so excited for Rebel Moon. Let's 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 get that ball yeah, going. Yeah, Rebel Mr. Moon is good. I think that Mr. could be Snyder. a lot of fun. Come on. Let's all right, do guys. That. Question is for you. What do you think about this? I mean, Zack Snyder said some things that granted on the surface may make it look like he's saying, if you didn't like my movies, it's because you're the problem. You didn't understand it. I, I Obviously, I disagree with that sentiment, but I don't even think he really meant it that way. But anyway, guys, whatever you guys think about it, jump down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts. Guys, we want to thank a sponsor of this video, Rocket Money. The average person has around 12 paid subscriptions. Think about that. If you think you're only subscribed to a handful of services, you might want to double check. With Rocket Money, you can quickly identify and cancel all of your unwanted subscriptions. Rocket Money, formerly known as Truebill, is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitor your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Rocket Money will quickly and easily identify your subscriptions for you so you can stop paying for the ones you don't want and don't even use. Simply find the subscription you don't want and press 
cancel and Rocket Money will cancel it for you. No more long hold times with customer service or tedious emailing back and forth. Rocket Money makes canceling subscriptions as easy as the click of a button. My wife Ann and I moved out of Burbank two years ago and one of the first things I discovered when I loaded up Rocket Money was that I was still paying for a gym membership I haven't even been to in Burbank in two years. So stop throwing away your money. Cancel unwanted subscriptions and manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash campia. That's rocketmoney.com slash campia. rocketmoney.com slash campia.